Today our topic is fossils in time and space and in which we will be discussing the second part of use of fossils in the discovery of the biostratigraphy. As we have discussed in the previous lecture that the biostratigraphy is a mean of correlation and with the help of biostratigraphy we can not only see that how old a fossil is but also we can see that how old a layer of the earth is, how old a stratum is. But what are the problems with it? The problem is that fossil record is rarely complete. We do not have all the fossils. We do not have all the organism that ever lived on the earth. Their fossils we do not have. Why? Because there are plenty of other factors which we will be discussing in the coming lectures that why some of the fossils are not preserved and why they are not available today. And of course we haven't uh, seen or we haven't excavated the whole earth in the pursuit of the fossils. So there is some incomplete record and with the help of that record we cannot establish the particular lineage of uh, an organism in a perfect order. Only a small percentage of po potential fossils are ever preserved. And stratigraphic ranges can also be influenced by the synod lips effect. Now, what is synod lips effect? We have discussed that a little bit in the previous uh, topic, but we will be discussing with the name that is synod lips effect. Since the fossil record of organism is never complete, neither the first nor the last organism is given a taxon will be recorded as a fossil. So if I am di discussing about one particular organism, when it first evolved, that first evolved organism will not be preserved, not necessarily be preserved. And if I am seeing that in a, some strata, if I have identified a fossil of that organism, there is a, a chance that that organism was already present many generations before and we don't have the fossils for that. And same is the case when we have recorded at the last that organism might not be extinct after that and that is synod lips effect. We cannot be sure that what is the range of that organism being on this uh, in the face of the earth. Now, many different animals and plants are used in the biostratigraphic uh, correlation. Uh, animals and plants, that means the animals and plant fossils. If I, am, uh, if I am studying a particular era in the, uh, uh, in, in the strat, if I, I am studying a particular stratum, if I am studying a particular layer in the earth, in which a particular fossil is found. If the same fossil is found somewhere else as well, then both are the fossils are living in the same time. So that means that uh, that is called biostratigraphic correlation. Uh, appearance of one particular organism can also tell you that which era that is, the which, uh, in which era that layer was formed. For example, graptolites uh, were formed uh, uh, were present on the earth 1 million years ago and ammonites were present 25,000 years ago. So both of these uh, fossils, if they are found in particular layer, we can tell that uh, how old that layer is. And these are the best reliable zone macro fossils. That means these fossils will be present. And all the other fossils that are present along with these fossils, those can also be aged accordingly. So if there is another organism which is found along with the greptolite, that I can tell that greptolite is 1 million years old. So other fossils is also 1 million years old. Now, the micro fossil groups, right? So if there are macro fossil groups, then of course there are micro fossil groups as well. For example, con conodonts, dinoflagellates, foraminiferans, and plant spores, these can be categorized as the microfossils because they are comprising of small samples 
and you know we can just uh, uh, we can ex excavate these with the help of drill cores and chippings only we don't not need to uh, use the heavy machinery and wh how wh what is the use of these fossils these are used in the petroleum exploration so micro uh, fossils uh, groups are very diverse they are widespread and they are rapidly evolving but what is their drawbacks that the techniques that are used in the excavation of these fossils these are very specialized like acid digestion and thin sections and the uh, the very specialized means that we cannot use the same techniques for our purpose our purpose is biostratigraphy but they are using for the uh, petroleum exploration or any other purpose right so every field has their own purpose our purpose is uh, the age and the evolution of organism we cannot see that with the help of microfossil now there comes a chrono stratigraphy chrono wherever the word chrono means that means time so dividing up the geological time uh, is coming under the chrono stratigraphy uh, the chrono stratigraphy or grober standard a standard stratigraphy these are the two names for the uh, branch of the science in which we are discussing the time along with the layers of the earth and these are the most fundamental uh, of all strat uh, stratigraphic concepts so now what is the definition the branch of geology concerned with establishing the absolute ages of strata so if there is a layer of uh, earth in which there is a fossil i want to determine that what is absolute age of that layer of the earth and the fossil then that is coming under the chrono stratigraphy then after that there comes the uh, sequence stratigraphy in this uh, sequence stratigraphy is a branch of geology that attempts to subdivide and link sedimentary deposits into unconformity bound units on variety of scales unconformity means that when one layer is ending and other layer is starting and we have you know uh, discussed that in very early in this topic that that might be due to some extinction event so one layer is uh, due to some reason stopping and other one is evolving that is called uh, that is forming a sequence there is a layer and after that there is another layer so they both the layers are making a sequence and that we discuss under the sequence stratigraphy and after that there comes the cyclo stratigraphy cyclo stratigraphy uh, is finding the rhythm in our own planet you know that in earlier times there were various ice ages so that ice ages we do not live in the ice age today that is sort of uh, coming in a cyclic manner there will be more uh, ice ages in the future as well so cyclo stratigraphy is the study of astronomically forced climate cycle within the sedimentary succession that means we can see those climate cycles inside the layers of the earth and after that we have the geological time scale geologic means the earth time scale mean, means that how the time from the formation of the earth till today has been divided into different eras so system of chronological dating that relates to the geological strata to time for example we are we can say that when a particular layer is formed this layer was formed in a paleozoic era right so paleozoic was a an era and it is a part of geological time scale so it is used to describe the timing and relationship of events that have occurred during the earth's history and the last slide you can see that there is international chrono stratigraphic chart which is updated every month in which we can see that which layer was formed in which era and how old these different eras are so you can just go to the internet there is a link given in this slide and you can just download the chart and see that how the different eras have been in time during the formation of earth and we do have the evidence in the form of fossils to study all those eras